everyone, it's Ross, and today is the day after tax day. Oh my God, it is such a nice day. We're looking at about 65 degrees today here in Pennsylvania. It's beautiful. Um, getting a lot of things done today, getting a lot of things done over the next two weeks, because in about two weeks time, uh, our last frost is gonna be over, and our season will officially really begin for everything so I'm really excited I wanted to make a quick video telling you guys kind of what's gonna be going on in the yard just a little update of what I have to do in the next two weeks um, also before we get into that I wanted to say that I have been I guess the subject of something really incredible um, they say that if you're allergic to something and you're exposed to that thing that you're allergic to enough, you will eventually overcome it or it just won't be as severe. And I certainly, through my years of being in this yard, my years of gardening, I have never had, well, last year it got significantly better. Uh, my allergies, I've had allergies since I was a kid to pollen, all different types of pollen in the fall and in the spring. Real, realistically, I have uh, things that affect me all, all year <laughs> with my sinuses. So I am always trying to keep my sinuses clear. And also, you guys always think I'm smoking weed or something crazy. Because I come out here and my eyes look really glassy and my eyes look like a mess and I look like I was smoking weed. And rightfully so. But I'm here to tell you that after last year of just an extreme amounts of pollen, what had happened last year is that the, the weather was so weird that everything had bloomed at one time. We had this crazy extreme uh, injection of pollen into the air. Maybe you guys have heard about it last year where there was pollen just like drifting, just giant smoke clouds of pollen. And I was out here every day because I have no choice. And I would take an antihistamine, and I would uh, <laughs> I would try to get myself through the day as best as I could. And this year, I have absolutely no issues with any pollen. I am completely blown away. And uh, I don't know. Maybe it will continue. Maybe it'll come back. But for me, I'm. I feel like I've been the subject of something really cool and I wanted to share it with you guys. But what we've got going on up here is just a whole mess of plants that we are trying to harden off. We need to come in here and actually water them all. Uh, water some of these guys. Excuse me. We've got tomato plants, other seedlings down here, like our melons. Excuse me, guys. We have peppers, we have uh, zucchinis, we've got artichoke, we've got all kinds of things up here. And this is really what we're doing. We're overwintering this stuff. Um, something also on the steps here we're going to be using is the Myco Grow, which is mycorrhizae. And this is stuff from Paul Stamets. I really recommend his company. I think you can get it on Fungi per Perfecti, but I think the website is hostdefense.com. Maybe that's not right anymore, but that stuff, you basically put that into your water soluble. You make it into like a water-soluble fertilizer and water all your garden beds, water all of your potted plants. And that's what we're gonna do in the next couple weeks is that because everything's now growing, all these garden beds are now active, we are going to be watering in that mycorrhizae. Uh, it's really important to get that relationship started. And then once you have enough plants and enough roots in the soil, that mycorrhizae will bind to that and you will then eventually form that relationship hopefully for a long time. And that's the goal is to keep that relationship going moving forward for me is that these perennials should have no problems like the figs, right? They should have no problems keeping that relationship going, but our vegetable annual beds certainly will. So what I'm gonna do is probably sometime in the winter time we're gonna put down a nice little um, cover crop that'll put out some decent roots and be able to still continue on that symbiotic relationship with the mycorrhizae. 
And that's what we're gonna do, is that we're gonna continue that and start this whole process now. That packets, those packets I showed you, really are not actually that expensive. So if you're interested in getting them, um, I think that's a really credible source for anything mycorrhizae, anything mushroom related. Paul Stamets is, uh, just knows his stuff. So um, what else are we gonna be doing? Well, our trees are about to be setting fruit. Um, certain trees, certainly the apricots, definitely these peaches here will be setting fruit. And I don't have to come in here and hand pollinate this because I've seen actually plenty of bees nowadays. It's really nice to see. The bee population is going strong. Um, but what we will have to do and what I should do is that after fruit set is come in here with surround kale and clay and we're going to spray the fruits with the clay and that's going to help prevent the plum cucurlio that definitely infected a pretty decent amount of these peaches last year it was not really a big issue but i wonder if it will become a big issue this year what we had done to stop that life cycle from completing is that if there were infected fruits that had fallen to the ground we had disposed of them and then that way we're, we're not letting that whole process continue and that life cycle continue so what we will do i think this year is because i'm not sure if we are going to get a frost well i guess we have to wait and see right if because if we're going to get a frost then spraying fruits that don't exist is not going to happen so um we will have to wait and see but uh i guess the frost will inevitably make that judgment call for us um, but if there is a frost that comes in and let's say about half the fruits are still there well then we got a nice little thinning process that happened naturally which is pretty cool a lot less work but we are going to want to protect those fruits as much as possible with the clay because if any of these plum cucurlio come around and start biting into these fruits and laying their larva then um, that's going to become an issue with the remaining fruits um, what else do we have to do well the grapevines are finally waking up and because the grapevines are waking up we have to spray as well we're gonna have to come in here it's a bit of a process getting back here nowadays but we're gonna have to spray as soon as these new shoots out of the grapevines are about a foot in length we're gonna come in here and use Man, what is that stuff called? We've mentioned it in the past. But it's actually the only inorganic spray that I'm gonna use. And the reason why we're using it is that we have to come in here and stop this black rot. Black rot just completely ruins my European grapes. It's too humid here. There's too much disease. It's just next to impossible to be growing um, grapes, European grapes in this climate without some sort of uh, some sort of spray we've also got a lot of these flowers these different flower bulbs opening up and because Easter is this Sunday um, today is the 16th so what we're gonna end up doing is actually cutting out some of these flowers and creating ourselves a nice little bouquet for my mother and for my aunt and my grandmother on Easter and uh, that way we're gonna have a nice little bouquet for them that should look pretty nice with all these beautiful flowers in it we've got tulips and and uh, daisies i believe is what they are i don't know i'm not a flower expert but we're probably going to put some of that stuff together and also use i think weeds <laughs> i think we're gonna we're gonna get some weeds together uh this one in particular some of this can be really beautiful here so we'll chop some of this off and throw that in the bouquet. Um, also, if a frost, I wanna go back to the frost real quick, because if a frost does end up coming in, I really am gonna wanna protect certain things here. And I haven't really decided what yet, because I don't really wanna think about it unless I have to. But we could certainly throw something overneath, over top of all these apple trees. Um, I definitely wanna protect a lot of these, uh, these peaches here. And I definitely want to protect the figs on the patio. Also, any of the in-ground figs, like this here. This is Neruciola de Elba, which 
has 10 Brava on it, so I want to protect this for sure. Um, I want to protect that fruit. I want to protect any of the figs that have put out any growth so far. And I kind of have to pick my battles here. Like the, the cherries, the fruit set doesn't seem to be too great. Um, we also need to have this one here open up because if this one doesn't open up, that coincides with this cherry, there's not going to be that cross pollination. So the cherries inevitably, I'm not a huge fan of anyway. Um, just because the store quality is so similar to what you can grow here that I probably won't protect those. Um, what I do want to protect is some of the pears and I want to protect some of these apricots if I can. Um, and definitely these plums here. So we're going to protect as much as we can, but I do need to pick my battles. Um, some other things I want to mention is that we have to get all this wood here off the patio. This wood is what we had used for our raised beds. And this is one little part, one little big piece of work here, but I gotta get this off the patio. And then I'm gonna put this underneath the sunroom in storage. And then in the fall, we're gonna come out here, bring it back out, and we're gonna make this into cold frames. And we're gonna use cold frames all winter time. I have to get myself some plastic around that time as well. Uh, but you can see here, a lot of the figs are already out on the patio. We need to be on top of this, the figs as well, because we need to select the shoots. We haven't done this on all of the trees yet, particularly the shoots and the trees that are out here on the patio that have not gotten a head start in the greenhouse really do need to be thinned out. So we're gonna thin out this. We need to pay attention to suckers. You can see back in here, I wanna show you this. This particular tree has got two suckers coming up from the base. We need to take all this off. This is a Franken fig. So, or this is a grafted variety. So we don't want to have the rootstock come back. But also up top, we want to thin this out so that we have enough growth for this tree going in the right places. So what I'm going to do is actually take this branch off. Um, I think four is a reasonable number this year, but maybe we'll leave five on there. We'll take this one off, and this one looks like it's starting to grow, so we'll take that off. And I think we're going to take this off. So that leaves us with five. We're in a 10 gallon size pot, but this tree is pretty weak. It's on a really weak rootstock, uh, it's on a dwarf rootstock. So that one I don't really think should have too many growth points on it. But that's the kind of thing that we're talking about here is coming in here and thinning some of this out. Let me show you guys another example. This is a variety called Baccarinho, which is a Portuguese variety, should be pretty early. And I'm gonna take off a lot of this growth that's growing towards the other tree because we have two in the same pot. So we'll take that off. Uh, we should take out a lot of the lower growth. So we'll take out the lower growth here. We've got one, two, three. We've got three that's gonna come out in this direction, which is perfect. But I kinda want a fourth, to be honest with you. Um, we're gonna definitely take out, I think, this here. And maybe we'll leave that. We'll see what this looks like about a couple weeks from now and make a judgment call as to if we should take off more. Similar thing with this one, Col de Dom Grease, but Col de Dom Grease VS, we're gonna actually use that as rootstock, I believe. So, not a huge deal. But you can see here on this variety, this is Vibo Valencia, and believe it or not, I didn't, I didn't snip this one off, and you can see it's growing out of the apical bud here which may actually be a bad thing because I want it to, to branch out at a lower height. So what I may do is come in here and actually chop this back somewhere and then have it leaf out at a lower, a lower height and form good branching there. Um, other than the figs, or at least more on the figs, is that I need to come out here once the frost is over, bring all of them out here. We're gonna have to take off all this mulch 
all the mulch you guys see, we're gonna be taking all that off to help warm up the soil. Um, once all of this is off and everything's out here, we need to set up the irrigation. Um, we need to fertilize immediately. Once these things are awake and they're on the patio and I think they're in a good position, we need to fertilize them. That's step one for sure of the, of the figs is getting them all out here, getting off that mulch and fertilizing them. That's step one. And then we can think about coming in here and setting up this really ugly looking um, <laughs> irrigation that's just been lying here on the ground all winter time. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of kinks in this thing, which is really going to suck, but it is what it is. Um, some other things I think we want to do is we need to plant a lot of our figs. This one I think I'm going to dig up, put that one in a pot. But also we're going to be planting a lot more still in these rows. We have plenty more to go. Another one there in the middle. Um, as well as plenty down here for each of these little sticks each of these little stakes represents a fig tree that will grow in go in and in total i think in this just in this area on this side of the house will be about 30 varieties and you can see this is already what some of them look like we have to get more rocks we have to get maybe even some brick all this should be hopefully pretty cheap and then we can move from there and put all these um, varieties in but I would imagine very soon um, it looks like down here long to do is already starting to leaf out I know LSU champagne is so on the 16th of April these guys are already starting to leaf out which is really good really good sign um, looks like my Zor's dark is buried and we don't know what it looks like <laughs> but I'm sure it may be starting to leaf out relatively soon as well. Um, we are getting a couple other things in the mail. And these other things in the mail that we're getting, we're going to have to plant them as well. I don't really remember what those are. So <laughs> we're going to have to see what we, what we ordered a long time ago and figure out a nice little spot for it. Um, I'm not necessarily too concerned with protecting these guys from the frost. But I would like to protect my persimmon tree because it is leafing out now. And this is really unfortunate, but I think if this growth gets hit with a frost, it's not gonna be good. And all the fruit that we're gonna get off of these shoots here is what is, well, that's where it fruits, right? So if this dies, these buds die, the chances I think of getting fruit are much lower also the fruit set is going to be much lower um, there's also a lot of little shrubs like these currants and these things are loaded with currants so I don't know what I'm gonna do because there seems like there's just too much to protect there really is um, the blueberries are leafing out and they're filled with fruits um, everything is just going berserk uh, something else we have to figure out is the irrigation system for this year. You can see here is the auto siphon that siphons out the fertilizer out of this particular bucket. We fill this up with fertilizer and it injects that into the, the hose line there. What I need to do I think is actually attach this to the top um, because we're not getting enough water pressure I believe to have this suck out the fertilizer. We need to mess around with all the irrigation. It's really going to be an issue and a headache. <laughs> <laughs> probably gonna have to order all kinds of different parts that maybe have broken replace things fix things it's really the most annoying part of having irrigation but it saves you so much time and effort because if I had to come out here and water all this stuff it would just be it would just be too much work and then also sometime around I mean, once I've figured out if the frost is coming or if it's past, we can get all this out of here. All the stuff in the greenhouse can indeed come out and that will be a very happy day. But I will put all of this stuff, I would say about half of this, take it out of here and then the other half, or maybe even less than half, just one layer of pots on the bottom layer 
that will stay here till about maybe June 1st. And this will really help those particular varieties that maybe are a bit further behind. They're gonna set a lot of fruit, all that excess heat. We definitely need to get the pomegranates out of here because they do not like this environment. I, this is the last year I think I'm gonna put the pomegranates in here because uh, they leaf out very early and then once they leaf out, they just suck up so much water because there's so many leaves and a lot of the growth on this particular one is is dead so this is going to hurt my fruit set i may not even get fruits because of what i just did or because of this portion of the season there's another pomegranate in the back that has a similar story so my pomegranates don't look good and i honestly can't afford to keep them in here every year i think also, a lot of the growth in here is getting nice sun, but some of it's not. And because it's not getting sun, it's really thin, straggly growth. And because it's thin, maybe this branch here is a good example. It's, uh, it's not looking too good. So, just got to come in here and get some things out of here and clear this up and we'll be alright. Other issues and other things on the agenda is that we need to up-pot. So this is the potting bench that we use with all of our amendments underneath, different pots. We actually are not going to be up-potting too much this year. This is going to be the first year. This is a lot of work that I put in every spring. And this is one year that we're not going to be putting in a lot of work into this. We're probably going to be up potting or adding maybe only about 10 to 15 pots which is next to nothing <laughs> compared to what normally happens here so actually we're taking out a lot of pots off the patio planting them in the ground and um, that way we're not really going over the limit of how many new pots I'm adding this year and that way our storage can be a lot more manageable um, and that's really the end goal is that we're getting varieties that I really really like in terms of figs that I think are really good winners here that are very productive will fruit for me no matter what and are very tasty what I would consider my top choices here we've propagated them quite a bit and we're getting them out here on the patio um, into about five gallon size pots so a bit smaller, easier to store, and those guys will essentially become my production trees while I am still considering and messing around with these Franken figs and all these different varieties that we've got. Um, some of those varieties that we are gonna have in the five gallon size pots and the next year we'll move them up into a 15 gallon once we finally get rid of a lot of these pots is that um, we're keeping, I think, Smith is one that we've certainly propagated quite a bit. We should have somewhere around 10 of those, I think. Something crazy. We're gonna have a lot of Smith trees. We're also gonna have um, a lot of Pastiliere that's gonna be in the ground. I have four of them that are gonna be in the ground. Campaneri, which uh, we're gonna have about six of those or five of those in the ground. I may even graft some. And then we're also going to have um, a Shia Black. We have, we'll probably have about six of those in pots. And then finally Azores Dark, which has become certainly my favorite hardy Chicago type so far. Uh, you can't go wrong with more Azores Dark, I think. So we're going to, we have one of them in the ground now, and we're probably going to have about three of them in five gallon size pots next year, or this year, I should say. Some other things what's going on I know uh, you would think wow Ross is doing a lot <laughs> I've just mentioned so much we also have to get more rocks so we need to get like 10 or 15 more bags of these rocks we need to get probably 10 or 15 bags of soil there's already 10 of them in the car I haven't taken out yet we also need to get <laughs> talking about materials here we're getting a load of wood chips, hopefully, at some point. I signed up for Chip Drop, and uh, they haven't really done anything for me so far. But mostly, I've only requested logs. 
We do need to get logs. We are gonna put down the logs to cultivate mushrooms in this area of the yard, which is very shady, also pretty moist. We'll keep the logs over here. Add in any excess logs that are not going to be cultivated with mushrooms in more of an ornamental feel. Sort of how this log is going back in here. Uh, but the wood chips we need to then spread out all over and that's just the time of year we or this is just You know that time that we have to get this on here certainly back underneath the apple trees um, We have straw currently which is doing making do Also in this hugel culture bed. It would be nice to get down a lot of wood chips back along here where the pawpaw is We need to add in plenty of wood chips Because the soil here is just weak right on this berm here. It's been weak for years since we put this in. So adding any fertility is really gonna help out even the Aspiade peaches, the muscadine grapes we put in, all that. So any fertility we can add in here is gonna help. Also, this bed has just been a nonstop pile of sticks. So we're gonna come in here to help break down these sticks. We're gonna break down the sticks even further, cut them up into smaller pieces add in wood chips on top that's going to break down nicely over the next two years even over here we'll probably add in lots of wood chips i just want a lot of wood chips uh, in other places i don't and i'll show you guys this bed over here where the raised bed was by the greenhouse there's two of them right there's one over here as well excuse the wind i don't know if you guys can hear me that well right now but you can see that the soil here on these this berm is completely bare and because it's bare this is not good long term especially for fertility for water retention but it is nice to help warm up the soil earlier in the year which is what i'm doing right now because we're planting figs along the berm we need the soil to warm up as much as possible and then once the soil and the temperatures get really warm outside then we have to put that mulch on here then we have to come in here with that mulch and, and cover all this and then every year in the spring you take it off you put it back on take it off put it back on it's just something we're gonna have to do um, also we're really propagating strawberries and I'm considering getting a couple more varieties we've got a purple strawberry we planted this year we've got lots of alpine strawberries and these I want to put them in strategic locations throughout the yard, but I haven't exactly figured that out 100% yet. Um, but yeah, those are all the crazy materials I need, I guess. Um, we do want to also in the future here, I guess I can't right now, so that's kind of not applicable to the video, but I would like to propagate more of the Josta berry and more of the honeyberry and more of the gooseberry and really put them in different locations throughout the yard. Definitely underneath trees and whatnot. Um, so we'll see. But that I think is mostly what I need to do <laughs> in this video. I, there's, there's probably more that I'm not thinking of, but this is a really nice little checklist for myself. And this will give you guys a nice little idea of what two, two weeks worth of work is like, hard work that I come in here every year and I spend about two weeks after tax season and I put in a ton of work to get all this looking great. Um, but once that two weeks is over, I gotta get back to what I was doing and things will start to slow down and then everything will be real ready for the season. And uh, not much happens in May, so, you know, getting all this stuff ready to go in april before even may is a bit early but you would be surprised i think all doing all this now a bit earlier putting in the work now is really going to help out the growth and the progress later so all right guys that is this video and i hope you enjoyed this one i hope you got this far if you did consider supporting me on patreon also check us out on facebook instagram and twitter i really appreciate you guys for following along this this whole entire video 
Also, I'd want to mention that uh, we are having uh, our podcast that's been pretty much been going on for 26 weeks. We've been we've started a podcast called Fruit Talk. If you haven't seen it, check it out. We're going to have it on iTunes and Stitcher and all these different podcast websites soon. So 